Constable redwoods are really a species of superlatives. You know, as a species, their lineage traces back over 100 million years, and an individual tree can trace 2,200 years in the lifespan of one tree. They're also the tallest trees in the world. They grow up to 379 feet tall. That's about as tall as a 35-story building. They really are remarkable. But really what strikes you when you stand on them on the ground is really the great girth of those trunks. I mean, it can take a dozen people just to stretch halfway around and give them a hug. They're found in a narrow band here on the western shore of the continent, essentially in California from the Big Sur coast, uh, south of San Francisco, running in about a 400-mile band up to off the Oregon border. They actually go about eight miles into Oregon. Uh, what's so special about them is they're basically never more than 40 miles from the coast. They really feel that coastal influence. What many people think of when they think of redwoods is that ancient forest, that old-growth forest, essentially the forest that has never been touched never been logged by man. When European colonists came west, they clearly saw the utility for redwoods. And so we did a very quick job of reducing the original extent of redwood forest, such that today, less than 5% of what we call old growth redwood forest still remains. Redwoods are a pretty remarkable species, and when you cut them down, that's not the end of those trees. They regrow they re-sprout. So a second growth forest or a third growth forest or arguably a fourth or fifth growth forest is really the, the sprouts that grow from that original root system of those big ancient trees. Redwoods now live in a very narrow range of temperature and precipitation just clinging to the coast of central and northern California in a very thin and narrow band. So we know already that redwoods have what we might call a narrow climate tolerance. To understand climate change impacts on redwoods in order to inform their management and conservation, we need to take a look at that current climate envelope and understand what our best climate models say about where that climate envelope might exist in the future. Global climate models are run under alternative scenarios of how humans will behave on the planet. When we run the scenarios through 2100, through to the end of this century, we see that under the pessimistic scenario, there are very dramatic contractions in the climate envelope that will support redwood forests and that most of the southern extension of redwood forests, almost all the central coast redwoods, would see their climate envelopes eliminated from the areas that they inhabit today. Under an optimistic scenario, one in which a global economy really does make an effort to transition to greener energy sources, we see a much less drastic reduction in the amount of habitat for redwood forests. We see it move a little bit into Oregon, and we see, importantly, some climate refuges, some places where there are very healthy redwood ecosystems today that are projected to stay well within the climate envelope of redwoods tomorrow and into the future. So there are these very different possible outcomes for redwood forests depending on what we do about greenhouse gas emissions today. We need to understand how the climate in California will change and identify areas that will be suitable from an ecological perspective, a climatic perspective for these trees and forests in the future so that we can begin to make plans to adapt to ensure that the parks and reserves we've set aside over the last 90 years have places to go, that there's protected lands and there's restoration efforts targeted alongside these projections of the future. The story of the redwoods and climate change is really a story about the choices that we make today and how those choices play out in these alternative futures that we've been able to model. Part of protecting the redwoods in the future means engaging a whole new generation, inspiring a new generation to care about these places. When we read the early letters from the people who founded Save the Redwoods League, they talk about going into these forests and literally their voices would drop and they take off their hats and they were entering with reverence. And it's, it's that type of uh, experience that people will have today if they go to these forests. You will hear people dropping their voices and slowing down and just letting the feeling of the forest kind of wash over them. And I think it's something that people take with them 
once they leave. It's a feeling that you can always return to, and it, it's really quite remarkable. They're just an incredible place, these cathedral groves, I think aptly named cathedral groves. You feel that deep connection to times past.